Good morning, everybody. Where is everybody today? Let's uh, get it going live. So Sunday breakfast with the coach. Uh, just waiting on everyone to get on board and then we will uh, begin. Hopefully we've got a number of people interested in the subject matter. And uh, it seems I have a bit of a delay. So I'm just going to wait for people to hop on board. And then pitter patter, we'll get at her. So um, yeah, let me know you're out there when you come on board. And uh, we'll get to the subject at hand. So a few people on board. Um, yep, everyone can see and hear me okay. Sound check, picture check, everything's all right. Um, yep, so as long as you can see and hear me, all is good. So uh, don't adjust your camera. Objects in your uh, camera are better looking than they appear. So give that a few seconds and adjust. And we'll get to the subject at hand today, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll get going. Um, shout out to the uh, All Blacks here. I know nothing about that sport, but a lot of my friends, fans, and followers sure do. So uh, they were sure to let me know uh, what shirt to wear this morning. So uh, we're all good there. So a little, little homage to the champs, I guess. So uh, let's get going. Uh, building up an audience, so we're just waiting. And then we will get to the subject at hand. Uh, lots to tell you about. And I'm sure uh, given the subject matter, a lot of people have some pretty strong opinions on the subject. So uh, that's not unusual at all. Um, very, very important that we uh, discuss something like this uh, because it comes up almost every other day in my uh, inbox from clients or people inquiring to be clients and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm always getting the question, do I work with someone who's going through menopause or about to go through menopause and, and yada, yada, yada. So uh, definitely something uh, I think that we should address in terms of uh, broad strokes. Uh, you can't get very specific on the subject because um, every individual experiences it in qualitatively different ways, of course. So uh, we can give it the broad strokes in terms of what research has to offer and then take it from there. So. Um, I see that, uh, yeah, people are looking forward to uh, some direction and uh, some insights um, into menopause. So very, very important thing. Um, once you're over 40 as a female, you're definitely uh, in it. Um, you might be pre, you might be peri, but uh, you're definitely going to start experiencing the changes. Some experience it uh, more intensely and deeply than others. Uh, but it's definitely a reality that needs to be faced. So that's what I want to talk about today. So uh, we're getting up there in numbers. I'll wait for a couple more people and then we'll uh, rub our hands together and get at it. And uh, um, some of this stuff may or may not seem controversial. It depends on how much research people have done on their own. Um, but uh, again, I try to uh, I try to look at what uh, most the preponderance of the research has to say and go from there. So uh, I think we'll, I'm just going to get started if that's okay with everybody. So I um, want to look at the metabolic and uh, hormonal realities and changes during menopause and just what the hell is going on uh, because that's uh, almost the tone of the kind of questions I get from people. And ladies, so um, keep in mind, folks, that I'm going to ref, I'm going to use and list to you. I think the best reference is for you to check out. I'm going to hang on and, and do that at the end, if you don't mind, rather than um, rather than interrupting uh, all through with where my points are coming from reference wise. I'm just going to lay it lay it all out at the end, if that's OK with everybody. And uh, so uh, Lydia is saying, wow, she's 51 and she's still not there yet. That's impressive, but that's an exception, not the rule, Lydia. And it may be that you're there, but you're just having a minor a minor and mild experience of it, which kudos if that's the truth. Um, and if that's your reality, that's fine. But, uh, you know, that's not the case for the majority of ladies, that's for sure. So um, again, uh, so hang on, I'll, I'll list all the relevant references at the end. Um, and uh, that'll allow me to get through my arguments uh, a little quicker and a little deeper and take your comments because I know a lot of ladies have strong feelings on this subject matter, but um, 
you know, again, you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Um, and this is where things get uh, misconstrued along the way because there's different elements at play at different phases of menopause. So I'll also say that I take on studying this subject because I think it's essential for good coaches in order to be able to take care of their clients, they have to research all the various demographics that potential clients may be going through. When I was coaching competitors uh, in the birth of figure and bikini and all the rest of it, and I saw what was going on and metabolic damage before the term metabolic damage even existed. I'm the one who actually coined the term metabolic damage. I thought it was a disservice for someone and all of us as coaches to not be researching what was going on. So same thing when uh, ladies started writing me and they're over 40 and all hell's breaking loose and this and that. Uh, what is my opinion? We have too many coaches out there with opinions and no facts and no research. And they go on Google for 10 minutes and they call themselves informed. And uh, that's a complete disservice uh, to people out there. So the good coaches are going to do their homework. I've done my homework. You can read my book, um, The Aging Proposition, or my book, Physique After 50, uh, and my books, Metabolic Damage and the, and the Dangers of Dieting. But uh, let's uh, put our hands together and, and let's get into it because I know you're, you're dying for um, what I have to say. And then we'll get to the comment section. So just what the hell is going on during the menopausal period in your life? This is a question I receive often from frustrated ladies writing me who are experiencing their bodies just going haywire on them and more than the usual haywire that is the female experience. So just what the hell is going on? Well, let's lay that out in terms of phases and, and um, different things that happen at different times. So very, very important. And the other thing here is this isn't just information, ladies, for you ladies who are over 40. You trainers out there, male or female, pay friggin' attention. And like I said, do your clients a service just because you're not going through it. If you're training anyone or coaching anyone who is, you need to be updated and you need to do your, do your homework. I'm sick and tired of coaches out there who are taking people's money and not showing up to be there for them. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a stain on what we all do for a living and it needs to stop. But the consumers need to take responsibility as well. If you're paying a coach and then you feel like you're bothering them for checking in and it takes them a week to get back to you or four or five days to get back to you, why do you continue to give them your money? I hear uh, people write me like that and they say, oh, my coach is too busy or my coach is competing and they, can, they never get back to me. And then why do you continue paying them? And they use words like loyalty and things like that. Listen, loyalty works two ways. And so does accountability. Your coach needs to be as, count, as accountable to you as you are to them. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So um, that's a little bit of a side rant there, but I'm known for those. So let's get to the common elements of metabolic and hormonal scenarios that will play out. And that's what I'm going to spend the time discussing here. The fact is, with so many ladies over 40 years of age referred to as metabolic damage from dieting, really isn't metabolic damage from dieting. The metabolic issues are real and the hormonal obstruction and other changes are real as well. Your body going haywire is real. Now some will hide behind that and some will be very real about the biofeedback with that. But during the pre and perimenopausal phase of life, these changes are often more due to transition than to metabolic damage or to weight gain due to dieting. So make no mistake about that. It's not metabolic damage, it's the change. So as I've been arguing for some time now, uh, metabolism and hormones go together and affect each other in very pronounced ways. And in the menopausal period of a woman's life, this can wreak havoc on what used to feel like normal function. Uh, and it can also become a nightmare for trying to control your weight, okay? Uh, if, you, if you can, folks, I'm seeing all the comments coming in. Uh, yeah, if you want to hold off on your comments just till I'm done here, it'll, it'll keep me from being distracted and it'll keep me on keep me on topic. Um, I, I'm going to address all these for sure, but uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, just to keep me on, on point here. So um, solutions to these issues begin with a clear understanding of the problem. You can't change what you don't understand. You can't change what isn't clear. 
All right, and during menopause, the issues begin hormonally and estrogen progesterone balance uh, changes are the first issues you need to understand here. So I'll say it again, you can't change something you don't understand. Uh, and I'll get to that and I'll get to the pretentiousness of the fitness industry who want to sell you the notion that fitness solves everything. Well, fitness doesn't solve everything and oftentimes fitness is the problem, not the solution. So first of all, we need to discuss what's called the estrogen dominance phase. Hopefully several of you have heard of that and you know what it is. Um, and again, just emoticons across the screen if you're with me in the conversation and then just hold your, uh, hold your points to the end. So here is the usual hormonal cascade in the estrogen dominant phase. Both estrogen and progesterone levels decline with age, but progesterone goes first and at a much steeper slope, okay? A menopausal woman, listen to this, has 5% of the progesterone she had in her 20s. A menopausal woman has 5% of the progesterone she had in her 20s, yet she still likely has about 40% of her estrogen because of the way estrogen is stored in fat cells, and those fat cells continue to pump out estrogen throughout her lifetime. This means estrogen dominance, as progesterone goes down, is a bigger problem if you are overweight and an even bigger problem if you're overweight from yo-yo dieting and I'll explain that in a few minutes. This is why it's important that fitness experts understand this and most of them don't even have a clue or are completely ignorant to the subject and they think that their magic diet is going to somehow solve this. So estrogen dominance is because of a complete steep slope decline in progesterone while estrogen levels stay relatively relatively the same even though they are declining as well and this spells hormonal imbalance and disruption and dysfunction all right so that's very important thing to point out right from the get-go okay this becomes a real cruel negative feedback loop the cycle looks like this in terms of a feedback loop estrogen promotes fat storage and weight gain and then these fat cells that store estrogen trigger the production of more estrogen and then round and round it goes. More estrogen means more likelihood to store fat. More fat means more likelihood to stimulate estrogen. And so you have what we call a negative feedback loop. With the metabolic disruption and dysregulation caused by yo-yo dieting on top of that, thinking that dieting is your solution, these hormonal effects become even more pronounced, okay? You're likely to get even fatter uh, from ill-advised diets like keto nonsense and low carbs and the rest of it. Now, of course, in the modern world we live in, you must also consider uh, environmental xenoestrogens as well, uh, as they too can get stored in fat cells. That even happens to men, uh, giving men gynecomastia and things like that. And those uh, environmental xenoestrogens add to the cyclic effects of estrogen making fat and then fat making estrogen. So obviously this is a recipe for disaster in terms of controlling weight and body fat as you age. Furthermore, as Julie Holland points out, and I'm using her name because I'm going to use a quote here and I'll get to her book at the end, but here's a quote from Julie Holland. Unopposed estrogen is not just uncomfortable, it's dangerous, putting you at risk for uterine, ovarian, breast, and colon cancer. And that's from her book, in uh, Moody Bitches, 2015, page 121. This unopposed estrogen in the estrogen dominant phase brings more problems with it when you don't ovulate, when you are going to feel fatter because unopposed estrogen without ovulation means more water retention, more bloating, uh, things like that. Now, think about that for a minute because these things often get confused as nutritional issues. In other words, when you talk about this unopposed estrogen in the estrogen dominant phase, feeling fatter when you're not ovulating anymore, um, unopposed estrogen means more water retention, more bloating, uh, more stomach distension, things like that. These things are often confused as being nutritional issues, okay? In other words, a cleanse or going gluten-free isn't going to change this because it's not a nutritional issue, okay? These are not nutritional issues post age 40, okay, the, the bloating, the water retention, and yet the fitness industry wants to continue to sell you that these are issues that can be solved with supplements or uh, magic, uh, good food, bad food scenarios, like going gluten-free or doing a cleanse. So first of all, like I said, you can't change what you don't properly understand, and not every issue can boil down to being nutritional or fitness related, 
uh, but that's what the fitness industry wants to sell you is a one size fits all solution. And the, in the pre, peri and post menopausal uh, period of a woman's life, of course, this just is not true. Uh, you just can't paint everyone with the same brush. Now that's the estrogen dominant phase. Now everything affects everything else. It's like a domino effect. Okay. So we need to talk about the thyroid connection and depression. Okay, these high estrogen levels signal the liver to make a protein called thyroid binding globulin. All right, thyroid binding globulin. And this drastically lowers your free thyroid hormone. And it's this free thyroid hormone you need in order to keep metabolism robust and healthy and optimized. Okay, so this scenario is often marked by the biofeedback of you feeling sluggish, feeling mentally foggy. You feel cold all the time, especially in the extremities of your feet and your fingers. Your skin is dry and your weight won't budge, even though your weight should budge based upon what you are eating. So if this whole scenario sounds all too familiar to you, then you should get blood work done, specifically look, looking at thyroid stimulating hormone and free thyroid hormone levels. Just list your symptoms to your doctor, the above symptoms I just met, I just mentioned, and he or she is going to know what to scream for, especially if you're over 40. So are you with me so far, ladies? Is some of this resonating with you? Uh, hopefully it is, and hopefully you're starting to uh, see the argument I'm making that uh, fitness doesn't solve everything. So uh, it can be part of the solution, but it's not the solution. So now I want you to listen up closely. The statistics here are that hypothyroid issues are 15 times more likely in women than in men. Think about that. The statistics are clear. Hypothyroid, low thyroid, uh, medical level hypothyroid issues are 15 times more likely in women than in men. And this problem can be more pronounced in the pre and perimenopausal stages, for instance, Women who are over 50 produce half the thyroid hormones than their 20 year old counterparts. Think about that for a minute. You're producing half the thyroid, the hormone responsible for controlling metabolism and weight control and things like that. You're producing half of the amount you produced in your 20s. So you need to think about that and be real about that for a minute. A cleanse and going gluten free and the rest of this nonsense isn't going to solve it. Okay, because this is a physiological medical issue, okay? So moreover, the depression is a common co-effect reported by ladies with hypothyroid issues. What does that mean? It means that low thyroid, okay, often triggers depression and, and that has concomitant effects, especially if you're over 40. Symptoms along these lines include problems concentrating, mental fog, low sex drive, low sex apathy, low energy, and just low moods indicated by overall apathy and loss of vitality. Everything becomes feeling like it's a chore. So before you go on antidepressants, all right, you may want to get your thyroid checked and then get it rechecked as well, especially if you're over 40 years of age. Uh, age. Going on antidepressants, ladies, is treating the symptom, not the cause, all right? And then you've got another problem on top of that. When you don't treat the cause, you're basically uh, masking the solution because you're not treating, you're not getting to the root of the problem. So now that's estrogen dominance, thyroid related issues, depression related issues, weight control related issues. <laughs> the comments are coming in, ladies. Just try to hold off. I'll, I'm gonna get to them, I promise. Uh, but I need to I need to make this argument and not keep interrupting it because some of it gets pretty tricky and I don't want to, I don't want anyone to get confused. So uh, you're following me so far, everybody, and then I will definitely get to the, your comments for sure. So the estrogen dominance and the low thyroid and how they influence each other. Well, then comes another hormonal swing that you need to know about. Now, as many of you have lived through or are living through right now. In the second stage, the perimenopausal transition, your ovaries finally tap out uh, and your estrogen levels, now they plunge. So you had estrogen dominance, but in the peri uh, phase, your estrogen levels suddenly plunge and they plunge deep. So estrogen dominance phase is gone, but now you have new symptoms caused by sudden low estrogen, all right? And topping the list of these symptoms are moodiness, irritability and mood swings, all right? And on the emotional side of the equation, or uh, that's the emotional side of the equation, 
moodiness, irritability, mood swings, I mean, common elements I'm sure you'll all relate to. Uh, but on the physiological side, uh, during this sudden drop in estrogen, hot flashes, night sweats, again, low libido on the physical side as well. Uh, these are the most common. These are the ones that most of you will relate to and, and respond to and, uh, you know, throw some emoticons if, if that's you and, and I'm describing you because these are the most common elements as estrogen suddenly suddenly drops and it drops like it's gone off a cliff. So imagine if we were talking about men here and their testosterone just drops suddenly like it went off a cliff, um, then you would see, uh, you know, similar uh, side effects, but it's just different for women. That's why we have a whole phase called menopause. So now during this phase, when estrogen dominance stops and just falls off a cliff, the risk of depression practically triples in the perimenopausal transition phase. So again, the risk of depression tripling in this phase, thinking that a better body is gonna solve this, all right, is foolishness, all right? Research clearly shows the prevalence of depression is highest in women aged 40 to 49, and, and that's including both genders. So the most people likely to be most depressed are women in the age group of 40 to 49. And yet, of all uh, women, the lowest depression rates are in women who are over 60. So we call this contradiction is often referred to as the storm before the calm. Things get really bad before they get really good. And that's from Julie Holland's book as well, Moody Bitches, and I'll, I'll get to that at the end. So remember, uh, depression is highest in women age 40 to 49, often triggered by these hormonal uh, and physiological and biochemical disruptions and changes and yet depression is lowest of all in women who are over 60. The storm before the calm, remember that, and try to try to quote it as well. Insomnia, also another issue too, I was just reminded of. So uh, each and every year I have dozens of ladies who write me who are in this age group, and they make statements to me in their, in their you know, check-ins, in their letters, you know, I have everything, I should be happy, why am I not happy? And yet they often come to me thinking that they can diet their way out of this scenario. Yeah, diet and training can have some positive and constructive effects to be true, but during this storm phase, the storm before the calm, the effects of diet and training are more likely, it's like adding an umbrella to weather the storm. Diet and training don't, don't just bring better, better weather on their own. So remember that diet and training during this period are like having an umbrella to weather the storm. Diet and training don't change the weather on their own, okay? This is a hormonal issue, not solved uh, nutritionally or through some kind of exercise regimen. And I sure wish that the fitness industry would educate themselves to stop lying to people to get their money and uh, completely misinforming ladies on what the problem is and what the solution is and admit that they are ignorant to the subject at hand. So that's a lot of stuff to take in so far. So uh, a brief pause while you consider all that. Let me know you're still with me, ladies, because I'm going to move on to another connection um, that you need to know about as well. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to talk about the cortisol connection during this period. So the cortisol connection is such that as estrogen levels fall so dramatically and suddenly during this phase, your metabolism becomes, becomes more sensitive to what's known as cortisol-stimulated fat accumulation. So that's a mouthful, let me say that. Um, your metabolism becomes more sensitive to cortisol stimulated fat accumulation as well. So this means that the more physical and mental stress you have in your life during this time, the more likely you are to partition food toward fat rather than uh, to store it in the right places. Now here's the double whammy thing uh, fitness industry coaches seem to be completely oblivious to. Now. Actually, let me pause here um, um, because this, I'm going to get into some numbers here in a second. A lot of you are throwing emoticons uh, across the screen, which I appreciate and like. It tells me that you're still hanging with the conversation and interested in the conversation, which is important. Um, but a lot of you are throwing emoticons up there that are blushing and embarrassed. This is nothing to be blushed and embarrassed about. This is human life. This is human biology. This is something that should be discussed. Um, I don't know why it always sort of has this sort of tinge of, of embarrassment to it or, or something like that. So, you, you know, th this, is a, this is the truth zone. As I said yesterday, folks, 
So uh, we need to talk about these things uh, openly and, and, and in real terms. So uh, there's nothing to uh, put blushed faces and blushed emoticons about here. Um, you know, this is about understanding what's going on with your own body. And that's nothing to be uh, blushy about or be humble about. I know for myself, I want to know what's going on with my body all the time. And I trust my body to tell me. So this is what this is about. So certainly nothing to be uh, embarrassed about or use uh, blushing emoticons about too. So let me get back to the cortisol stimulated fat accumulation that comes during this phase. Here's the double whammy. In this phase, your appetite for food goes up. All right, let me say that again. During the cortisol connection, cortisol uh, accumulates, cortisol, cortisol stimulated fat accumulation phase, your appetite goes up, but you're more prone to store fat. So it's a biochemical hormonal effect, but it's real nonetheless. You aren't crazy, okay? And you have to keep and be vigilant and be on watch for this. So in these pre and perimenopausal phases, you can experience a very negative one two punch of a slow and sluggish metabolism from that low thyroid that I talked about earlier on the one hand, and a body because of the cortisol um, stimulated fat accumulation, you now have a body that's more predisposed to store fat first. And then on the other hand, this is combined with new and increased levels of appetite, often ravenous appetite as well. So you're not crazy. This is actually documented uh, research. So um, fascinating research, but, um, it doesn't help people who are told that a diet is the answer. So now let's get let's get to some more research. Research shows that rats that have had their ovaries removed, uh, which mimics me menopause, that's why they did the study. These rats have an increased uh, desire to eat and drink. All right, that's increased that increased hunger that you felt uh, in your younger years if you experienced PMS when you were younger. It's like that, except if, instead of just being hungrier for a couple of days. It's now constant. It's there all the time. So furthermore, in this study, these rats showed uh, increased anxiousness and depressive behaviors as well. So all the things I talked about as, as well. And these things tend to feed each other, right? So uh, you're more predisposed to storing fat. You're hungrier than you've ever been. You've got a bigger appetite than you've ever been. You start gaining a little weight. You're already prone to depression and anxiousness. You start thinking more about your body and what the hell's going on as I started with. This, these often feed these feedback loops. Of course, that's gonna make you more anxious, more stressed, as that goes up, you're more likely to be more depressed, and yada, yada, yada. So this, these are the feedback loops that are going on during this phase. None of it has anything to do with fitness. So now, in this rat study, all of these things, their, their ravenous appetites to eat and drink, their increased anxiousness and depressive behaviors, all of it was normalized when the rats were given supplemental estrogen. So think about that again, this uh, once again, clearly demonstrating the connection between estrogen balance and harm, uh, hormonal health, emotional health and well-being, and even weight control. Okay, once their estrogen levels were restored, depressive issues, anxious behavior, and ravenous appetites all went away. So think about that for a minute, okay? So again, you know, you don't solve an issue with diet that diet never started to begin with. So in terms of weight and metabolism, hormone, re hormone replacement therapy can be self-saving and health promoting. Uh, and you need to understand that it can be helpful means to normalizing weight and appetite by setting metabolic and hormonal processes in, in order and getting them back online, so to speak. Think of all this uh, like your computer trying to function while it's full of viruses and malware or it's, it's filled with old ancient hardware, okay? Uh, then imagine if you installed on top of that, you put in brand new antivirus software. This is a lot like uh, HRT therapy, right? Diet and exercise can't solve every little or big problem. The fitness in industry likes to play God this way and tell you you can solve everything from cancer to menopause, but it's just not the truth, okay? We also need to know, and I documented this in my book, The Aging Proposition, how these issues are reflective of longer lives. Not till the 20th and 21st centuries were we living, uh, human beings were living past the age of 50 to begin with. So these were issues that couldn't even be experienced, let alone studied, okay, let alone solved uh, before this. But now we're gaining more and more information on it. So the life expectancy of people in the 14 and 1500s was, was 35 years old. 
or something like that, okay? So living to age 40 was unbelievable. So now that we're living to twice that age, of course we're going to experience issues associated with that because we've evolved. So you need to pay attention to that. So now let's move to the next phase, what we call the puzzle pounds problem, okay? Refer to, it, refer to it as the triple P. Here's what happens if you've been following along here. Um, and I, I wish some of you would hit the share button because <laughs> I'm gonna get so many questions after this is over and if people would just tune in and watch this, then uh, I won't have to repeat myself over and over again. But um, there is the menopausal period, what we call pausal pounds, uh, the pausal pounds problem. Here's what tends to happen. The research shows that women between the ages of 35 and 45 gain weight faster than at any other time in their lives on average. So if, if you say amen to that, throw an emoticon across the screen. Because I know this to be true in my own observations and studies of the demographic of letters that I get each week and the, and the ladies I've dealt with uh, who desperately want to figure out their puzzle pounds problem, the triple P issue, I call it. So by your late 40s, Majority of women who have little to no exercise background are overweight or obese. One of the biggest reasons for this isn't laziness, okay? Now, I'm gonna read this next one twice. I've bolded it in my notes. The caloric energy requirements of ladies in this age demographic of uh, 40 to 49 is 65% less than your energy needs when you were in your 20s. So this downregulation in metabolism doesn't tend to happen gradually either. It's pretty sudden and it's pretty abrupt. So think about that for a minute, ladies, and you trainers out there, okay? Think about that. The caloric energy requirement of ladies in this age demographic is 65% less than your energy needs were when you were in your 20s, okay? And this doesn't tend to happen gradually. It tends to happen pretty suddenly and abrupt along with an increased appetite. So think about that. Uh, do a quick math example here. So I'm just gonna, Grab this because everybody um, likes to pretend that everything's about numbers, right? So just let me uh, put that down. I'm gonna get out my calculator here and I'm gonna tell you what that means, okay? So let's say, I'm just picking numbers. You know I don't like formulas and I, and I don't like the fitness math that exists out there, it's ridiculous. But let's say for the sake of argument, I wanna teach you something about what this means in real terms. 65% less energy requirements than in your 20s. So let's say you're operating, average lady needs about 1800 calories per day, okay? Now, if you're operating at 65% less than that per day, if I times that by 65%, that works out to 1170 calories. Now, if I subtract the difference, 1800 minus 1170, all right? That's 630 calories less that you're burning off each day, which means that over the course of, say, five days, okay, let's say, um, okay, over the course of five days is 3,150 calories extra, all right, just in five days. And we know that there's 3,500 calories, all right, in a pound of, of fat. So if you keep along this trajectory, let me do that again, all right, 1800 minus 1170, all right, 630 calories extra just by eating what you're used to eating and not compensating for the changes in menopause. If we times that, say by 10 days, okay, that's 6,300 calories, all right, and if you divide that by 3,500, which is how many calories are in a pound of fat, then every 10 days, you're gaining almost two pounds of extra weight, two pounds of fat, all right, because you're now in this metabolic period of down regulation where your energy needs are 65% less than they were in their 20s. So think about that, especially you trainers out there who wanna do a lot of calculations. So if you keep eating the difference, then you're gonna end up uh, gaining weight um, just by responding uh, normally. So uh, hopefully, you know, those numbers are a reality check. So let me read the bolded statement again. The caloric energy requirements of ladies in this age demographic is a whole 65% less 
than your energy needs were that when you were in your 20s. And this downregulation of metabolism doesn't tend to happen gradually either. It's pretty sudden and it's pretty abrupt. So, and if you do the math, like I just showed you, it's pretty simple to show you how and why you would be gaining weight during these years through really no fault of your own. So also remember, keep in mind with those numbers, appetite and hunger don't slow down at the same pace as your decreased energy needs do. So you're still maintaining the regular adult appetite and hunger feedback loops that you had when you were younger, but you no longer need the energy that those um, feedback loops respond to. So think of that as well. So you have decreased energy needs, but you still have the same appetite and hunger for similar energy needs that you've been eating. So this is the overall imbalance in hormonal and biochemical responses as you age. And even if more hunger is induced uh, by trying to survive deprivation dieting to solve this, the likelihood increases of putting on even more unwanted weight in the form of body fat because of that cortisol-induced, cortisol-stimulated weight gain connection I discussed earlier. So you're creating a vicious circle for yourself uh, by thinking of magic diets as the solution. So if you don't learn this point in life to handle food, then food is now likely handling you. Uh, and that's one of my key quotes and key points for for ladies in menopause. If you don't learn before this point in life to handle food, food is now handling you. And this is where so many of those friends you know and envied when you were younger who could eat whatever they want and go out drinking and not gain weight, well now they're the ones paying a quote unquote heavy price for not learning about regulating hunger and appetite in healthy ways in their younger years. So many ladies that are caught in this vortex uh, simply have to learn how to eat all over again. And this doesn't mean learning to eat by counting calories and controlling macros and all the rest of the fitness industry nonsense out there, the faulty outside-in approach that tells you you can number crunch your way to health and overcome uh, the pausal pounds period and the pausal pounds problem. Let's get real about getting real for a minute. Uh, instead, it means learning how to gauge biofeedback and learn how to feed metabolism in order to optimize it not try to starve off fat, which tends to make the whole scenario even worse and more pronounced because of that cortisol stimulating fat effect. Now, hopefully you're following me all on all that. Again, this is a hormonal issue, not a nutritional one. So, uh, but there is nutritional advisements we can use. For instance, a word on soy products is warranted here. Soy and soy milk as an alternative to dairy have components that bind to estrogen receptors but do not create a spike in estrogen levels per se. However, uh, this soy-related element can lengthen what's known as the luteal phase of your cycle and cause heavier menstrual bleeding. But if you expect your estrogen dominant, for instance, and you have heavy periods and cramping, then avoiding soy products uh, makes good sense with uh, Adamame being the uh, exception there. I'm going to get to your comments in a sec, folks. Ooh, the comments are coming in, and I knew they would, uh, and that's good. I want that. So uh, by all means, please hit your share button, and, and let's get some ladies involved in the conversation because uh, there's a lot of stupidity out there, folks. Um, you know, as a side note, I've been a guest on a few podcasts lately, and it's the wild, wild west out there. There's people ho hosting podcasts I've been guests of that have no business having podcasts. They have no knowledge base beyond what I would consider a kindergarten level. Uh, and that's shocking to me. They have big followings and they have no clue what they're talking about. So it's a danger zone out there on the internet, especially on social media. So uh, very important as well. Uh, back to the subject at hand. Postmenopausal women who take estrogen are half as likely to develop Alzheimer's as those who do not. So let's talk about health for a while, shall we? I'm talking about your body and weight gain. Uh, but as we talked about earlier, the estrogen dominant phase is very dangerous, as Julie Holland pointed out, in terms of risks of several types of cancer. Your fitness regimen isn't going to diminish that risk. Uh, estrogen replacement therapy in the menopausal years can even stall or prevent dementia. And there's many reasons to look into hormonal replacement therapy to balance your hormones and metabolism. That's what I'm getting at here. This is the point I'm driving at here. Uh, and new approaches to this, because um, I've done my homework, uh, also include very low levels of testosterone administration for ladies as well as part of your overall 
hormone replacement therapy. And this approach looks very, very promising. And in fact, uh, previously, ladies who weren't getting much uh, help from hormone replacement therapy, when low levels of testosterone were added in, uh, it made all the difference in the world. So there's plenty of research on that as well, provided your doctor endocrinologist is up on the latest research. So now I'm going to say something that I know is controversial here. Uh, and I'll get to it maybe in, in future episodes, but I'm not a fan of bioidentical hormones, and I firmly believe proper hormonal medical intervention is the way to go if menopause in the pre-period or post-period is a real problem for you to manage. Bioidentical hormones became popular again. Once a celebrity endorses something, people assume this celebrity somehow has a medical degree that's done years of research. This became popular back in 2005, 2006 through Suzanne Summers, and then she got on Oprah, and Oprah, of course, um, you know, um, backed up what Suzanne Summers had to say, and, and uh, of course, this is what started the whole bioidentical hormone nonsense to begin with. But in fact, if you do just a little bit of research, you'll see that the 12 to 16 people that Suzanne Summers, the 12 to 16 doctors that she referred to, when plugging bioidentical hormones, none of them had published one single paper, all right, and none of them had any experience in endocrinology. So they hadn't published one single paper in this area, even though they plugged bioidentical hormones. Doesn't this remind you of my lecture on Atkins before, when I told you that Atkins never published a single paper about diet and nutrition and metabolism, while well, the same thing existed here. Yet the way consumer, the consumer way things work with the consumer is once a notion is planted, uh, then it's accepted as a fact. And like I've said a million times, a lie can go around the world before the truth can even tie up its shoes. So um, I'm not a fan of bioidentical hormones. Uh, have a whole chapter list of notes I can read about that if people are interested. I know it's controversial for you ladies out there who's who swear by them, but uh, medical proper, medical hormonal medical in intervention is the way to go. So uh, clearly, like wrapping all this up, menopause is a period in life that can lead to many negative unwanted changes such as depression, weight gain, or both. Uh, many of these issues get attributed to the wrong causes and then the wrong treatment is attempted as well, like, like I said before. Uh, oh, your your fitness guru who won a who won a fitness contest or a physique contest, they're going to give you nutritional solutions and fancy supplements to take, um, and they're going to solve it with your diet and your training regimen. Yeah, okay, right. Uh, they have no degree or background in any of this. Have done an ounce of homework in any of this, but they have all the answers because whatever the problem, fitness is the answer. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, now these things maybe may help but they won't solve the issue. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. And I know it can all be very confusing, but it doesn't have to be that way. Yep, proper exercise, good food, and medical intervention, not supplementation, can go a long way to living a smooth transition through this period. Look, I, um, just on television, I watch like CNN and stuff um, all the time. And now I know, I see that there's now a new supplement, of course, to help ladies through menopause. Uh, and it talks about all these uh, promises and, and relief of side effects that it's going to help you with. Uh, but of course, it can't address root causes, which is balancing your hormones. So, um, And again, when I talk to clients who write me, they become clients of mine or they're thinking about becoming clients of mine and they don't because they'll write back and say, I can't believe you're advising me to take hormones or you're advising me to take pharmaceutical drugs. Well, this is a hormonal and medical issue, not a nutritional one. If you broke your leg, would you refuse to have it set and refuse to have it put in a cast and instead take some supplements and eat better to heal it? That makes no sense to me. Sometimes medical, vent, medical intervention is the answer. So it's weird that people have this crazy, I, I won't take drugs, I won't take, listen, we're living longer than we ever have. And it's important to note that, that as we age, and we experience sarcopenia and metabolic and hormonal disruption and dysregulation, you don't have to live that way, okay? Hormone replacement therapy simply makes sense. Uh, and I wish, I wish people would, uh, would uh, get onto that. So um, yeah, um, I will talk 
bio, I, I knew the bioidentical thing would get a reaction. Uh, I'll talk that in a future episode, but uh, people should do their own homework as well. Go to PubMed or WebMD and, and just type in bioidentical hormone scam and uh, you'll find out the truth there. So that's my lecture. Let me give you some references right now and uh, I'll get to the, I'll, I'll backtrack through the comments. So um, one of the first references you should read is an, is an article by Lori Asarian, uh, AL, and the article is called Modulation of Appetite by Gonadal uh, Steroid Hormones, and that's in the Periodical Biological Sciences, 2006. Um, and then uh, a book uh, by Laura Corio, C-O-R-I-O, The Change Before the Change, Everything You Need to Know to Stay Healthy in the Decade Before Menopause. Uh, that's from the year 2000. Another article that uh, sums a lot of things up is by E. Feeman, F-E-E-M-A-N-A-L, and the article is called Hormones and Menopausal Status as Predictors of Depression in Women in Transition to Menopause, and then that's from the journal Archives of General Psychiatry, 2004. Of course, Julie Holland's book, H-O-L-L-A-N-D, and the book's called Moody Bitches, and that's from 2015, loaded with references that you can look up. Uh, E.S. LeBlanc. Uh, the article there, research article, Hormone Replacement Therapy and Cognition, Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis, and that's from the Journal of American Medical Association, 2001. And, of course, uh, Christian Northup's, uh, Northrup's book, The Wisdom of Menopause, in 2012. And then, uh, finally, uh, for the purposes of this lecture, uh, the article by uh, Amin Zenab, uh, Z-E-N-A-B, uh, effects of estrogen serotonin interactions on mood and cognition, and that's from the journal Behavior and Cognitive Neuroscience Reviews from 2005. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, hopefully you found it beneficial. I'm going to get to your comments now. Uh, hopefully I haven't missed uh, too many of them, and uh, hopefully you found this uh, Beneficial. Tracy Lynn says, this is a perfect subject. I'm 43, experiencing lots of shifts and changes in patterns in my body. Thanks for bringing it to the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is very, very common. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, Monica, just uh, my previous comment, my rant about coaching, Monica's just saying, uh, you know, why pay a coach if they're spending all their time on their phone? Well, that's a personal trainer. That's not a coach, uh, but that's fine. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, yeah, you know, uh, the comment there, follow-up comment from Tracy Lynn, you need to see an endocrinologist and a hormone specialist. I'm the first one to refer out. Uh, I'm not trying to play doctor. There's too many people in the fitness industry already doing that, um, playing God, playing doctor, thinking they can solve every issue with a fitness regimen. Uh, as I said, that's not reality. Um, so you, you, you might want to, you know, consider even if everything seems well right now, like I said, it's the stuff you do the decade before menopause that can make all the difference between, uh, you know, having a nightmare experience and having a pretty smooth transition. So that's that's important as well. I'm not a big fan of alternative therapies and alternative medicines, as I just laid out. Um, so uh, that's important as well. Keeping a consistent, healthy diet, a healthy whole food, plant-based diet, that's going to go a long way. Um, but it's not going to go all the way. So again, this is a hormonal um, and biochemical issue. It's not a nutritional one. However, nutrition can certainly, um, you know, keep you uh, calm waters rather than intense waves. So think about that for a while. Can a postmenopausal woman do the cycle diet? I don't see why not. I've had women on it. It depends where they're at. If they're in the estrogen dominant phase and the cortisol um, stimulating fat accumulation phase, then if they're not truly in super compensation mode, then they're likely to gain weight, not lose it. So a lot of people like the cycle diet idea because of the cheat days and the refeeds and the donuts and all the rest of it. But if you're not in super compensation mode, then you're just going to gain weight. So, um, yeah. Very, very important. Yeah, you're likely to get uh, a little sluggish and you're likely to start noticing uh, fat accumulation in the estrogen, in the places where estrogen tends to have the most uh, enzyme activity for fat accumulation, which is, of course, in the buttocks and around the middle. So very important as well, too. Um, Deanne says, if you are needing 65% less calorie intake, do we need to compensate if we work out every day? 
Um, yes and no. I wouldn't call it a numbers compensation. I would call it a, a compensation in terms of understanding what's going on with your body. Um, again, if you don't control hunger, hunger controls you. Uh, and that's a very important element as well. So um, uh, we'll get to that. So, um, and again, um, people are asking, you know, uh, well, what's the solution? What's the solution? What's, I'm telling you what the solution is. It's, it's HRT. It's hormone replacement therapy. I don't know why so many people, especially in the fitness industry, are so resistant to it. Like I said, if you have a medical issue, then medicine is the answer. So uh, again, that low thyroid hit issue, it's not going to go away. Okay. It's not going to go away because you suddenly start eating, right? Okay. That's, that's like I said, if you break your leg, are you going to refuse to have it set? and put in a cast and you're just going to eat better to make it better that doesn't even make sense so again i'm giving you the the answers so uh, very very important as well so uh, and then there's ladies that are posting um you know different books and stuff like that as well so uh i think i'm down near the end of the comments i thought there'd be a lot more so um side effects of hormone replacement therapy there can be depending on how good your doctor is or isn't this is one of the ways that um, um, the bioidentical hormone thing surfaced to begin with. There is a, a real long, intense uh, woman study, and it revealed some issues with hormone replacement therapy, but that was a long time ago, and uh, it seems to keep prevailing itself so that we can sell uh, supplements and bioidentical hormones and other things to women. But uh, hormone replacement therapy has evolved a lot since then, uh, and it really is the way to go. Again, even for men, and of course I'm a big advocate of hormone replacement therapy for men, uh, in our aging bodies, we don't have to live that way in terms of becoming old when we have uh, solutions to it and solutions that make sense now that we're living longer than we ever have why not live youthfully as well by correcting the hormone downregulation, disruption dysfunction uh, and and dysregulation that happens so um, very very important stuff uh, as you can tell and uh, i feel strongly about it uh, but i feel more strongly about it because of all the ways that fitness industry gurus and online trainers want to pretend they're educated about something, they have no background in at all, and then they're going to try to solve it nutritionally. Oh, you got, you've got bloating and you've got uh, puzzle pounds. Well, you know, uh, we'll do a nine-day cleanse and then you'll be, you know, you'll feel good again and you'll feel you know, rejuvenated and new and and all this other nonsense. We'll go gluten free. You probably have a gluten intolerance and you probably got celiac and, and uh, you know, lo and behold, if you look at the vital stats of someone, oh, they just happen to be over 50 and they just happen to be uh, not on hormone replacement therapy. And then some fitness wannabe misdiagnoses them and presents them with fancy solutions in the forms of supplements they can make money off of. Um, and treat it nutritionally when, you know, like I said, it's not a nutritional issue. So uh, believe me, if it was a nutritional issue, I'd be the first one yakking and ranting away about it uh, to get you on board. So um, again, hopefully this made sense. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, you guys have been, um, you know, on board with this uh, and, you know, you're making sense. So um Sherry says, I feel part of this for women is also mentally accepting that at 50, we are likely not going to have the body we did at 25. Um, Scott often comments on this and it's an excellent perspective. Yeah, sometimes it's just, you know, getting real about getting real. Like I'm 56 years old. I don't expect to be who I was when I was in the magazines and I wouldn't want to be. Uh, you know, that's a whole different um, thing. Uh, you know, uh, that people need to get real about getting real. It's harder for women, of course, uh, because they keep comparing them, themselves to younger hot ladies they see and uh, not accepting where they're at. Um, and you can't fight age. It's not a battle you're going to win. So why not embrace and accept it, uh, you know, and, and be strong. And on that front, let me just say that, uh, you know, I just wrote about this earlier for another thing coming up. But, uh, you know, I guess I'll just put it this way. It's only a weak man who is threatened by a strong woman. So uh, keep that in mind, uh, ladies. Don't ever question yourself for being strong in character or strong in personality. 
it's only a weak man that's threatened by a strong woman. So keep that in mind. Um, Catherine says, insist on a doctor that validates your concerns and deals with them or refers out as appropriate. I would prefer a family doctor refers out uh, for sure. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people, you might even have to go out of your city or out of your province uh, and things like that as well. So, um, you know, something to consider. But if it's bothering you that much and you're deep in it, like I said, it's going to be a different experience for, for women out there. Some are going to have a mild transition and some are going to have a wild ride and some are going to have a complete nightmare. Um, and you can't just dismiss other people. Yes, there are other people who will claim victim status and hide behind whatever, hide behind their age, hide behind their weight, uh, you know, hide behind whatever. That's just the nature of, of people out there. So um, again, so that's what I have for today, ladies. If you have anything else, um, be happy to hold on for a couple more minutes. Um, but again, um, you know, I'll say this one more time for someone who's tuned in, who's uh, having a rough time. So uh, just remember, only a weak man is threatened by a strong woman. So keep that in mind. And uh, hopefully, you know, that helps you stay true to yourself. That's what matters is right here and right here. And, uh, you know, you need to have boundaries that no one else can penetrate when it comes to that. And you need to have strong lines in the sand that you don't allow people to cross. I know I live that way. Um, and I think it's the best way to be in this life. Um, and as the old saying goes, people who value their privileges over their principles soon lose both. So keep that in mind. Uh, a little bit of life coaching there at the end. Uh, I appreciate the moticons, and I don't see any other comments coming in. So um, I wish, uh, yeah, I wish uh, all you guys the best. And again, um, this was meant to inform and help you check out those references that I listed. And uh, next week, I think we might just do question and answer. Uh, but by all means, please hit the share button on this. Uh, a lot of ladies don't understand what's going on with them. And, you know, by soliciting the help of some hot body in your local gym, you're not likely to solve this issue um, because, like I said, it's a medical one and it requires a professional attention. So, um, you know, a lot of times these, these you know, Hot bodies are so concerned about being hot bodies, they don't have the time, the energy, or the interest in doing the homework to help other people. Um, and uh, I'm way beyond that in my career. My career is all about helping other people. So uh, hopefully you know that. You know I do my homework. You know I do my research. That's my perspective. Uh, that's a little bit scraping the surface. And I don't want to. I didn't want to get too deep into this because I would lose people with the relevant research. But um, I thought menopause I need to address because I do get it all the time. And the most needy uh, and the highest demographic of women looking for answers online are women in this age group, 40 to 49. So uh, by all means, reach out for coaching. But please reach out for good coaching. Like I said earlier, I mean, if, if you have a coach right now that isn't getting back to you in like three, four or five days, fire their ass. Like that, that's on you. That's not on them. OK, so loyalty, loyalty works two ways. And a coach needs to be prompt and he needs to be uh, prompt and he needs to be professional and he needs to respond um, in quick manner so that you're always have an engagement back and forth. But, um, you know, that's a coaching um, that's a coaching argument for another day. Uh, check out my podcast if you want. Smarter Sculpted Physique. And hopefully a lot of you tuned into my Facebook page yesterday for Andy's epic uh, cheat day meal. Uh, that was pretty hilarious to watch. Uh, and again, that was based on people who don't know crap, uh, saying that there's no way Andy looks like that and eats what he says he eats on cheat day. We have no reason to lie about this stuff, no reason to make this stuff up after four decades in the industry. The cycle diet works, so I'm glad we got that on video. Andy took the time to videotape one of his epic cheat day meals, and it's there on my Facebook page uh, for you guys to see. If you saw it yesterday, it's pretty freaking amazing to watch and pretty funny as well. So that's it for me today, folks. I, uh, I'm going to uh, hit the highway, um, and uh, hopefully you benefited from this. And if you did, please hit the share button. Let's get people involved, uh, and let's get uh, looking at some answers instead of endlessly exploring the questions and the problem. So that's it for me. I'm out of here. Uh, you all be good to yourselves and each other. Bye-bye.